we need to visualize how vibration is all about. Uh, for me, the vibration is a new topic completely. Uh, but one needs to know how we need to visualize vibration is. So my first thought was, uh, uh, for example, uh, I, d I am your design engineer and uh, I invite you to my home and uh, I design a bus for you all people. And this bus is a special bus. It doesn't have any seats, no handles and is a trailer bus. Uh, something like you see a trailer truck, so it is a much, much like a trailer bus. And uh, you have no seats, but you can only stand, but it doesn't have any windows inside. So the process of visualization is like if I put a brake, all you, maybe one, if there's one person, he will roll from, from, bot, from backside to the front. And uh, if there are 10 people, then all, they all will start uh, holding their hands and try to make a stiffness and hold the walls. And they see that they don't uh, oscillate according to the bus vibration. So this was my first thought uh, since yesterday, how do I visualize vibration? And uh, now uh, I would like to throw upon uh, the overview of how uh, the vibration, uh, torsional vibration specifically for uh, gearbox is done. Uh, we use a simple tool called uh, DRESP, which, uh, where we try to get the torsional vibration in only one dimensional. So we have the uh, input data such as uh, torque as well as uh, gearbox uh, gear data, which comes from, uh, from our ST plus data. And uh, based on this, we try to put in this as an input to our uh, DRESP model. So for the DRESP model, we also have uh, what is our uh, mass moments of each and every component across the turbine, uh, let's say from the rotor the blades to the generator. All the components you need to address. So as we are specifically into how the gearbox is uh, about, so we also go in detail about uh, defining the mass and stiffness of each and every planet as well as the shafts. And the outcome is about uh, the deformation. Uh, we, are not, we are not specific about deformation of the deformation behavior, but we are specific about uh, kinetic energy as well as the potential energy. The KE plays here how your uh, uh, the, uh, ma mass numbers are about how the mass moment of inertia is behaving, and the P would define the stiffness behavior of the components. Yeah. So at the outcome of uh, the mode shapes, we have also a Campbell plot, uh, which we do it using a spreadsheet calculation. And then we find the critical detections. Uh, what is about this Campbell plot is all about is we use uh, the generator RPM as a reference RPM. And uh, according, with, re with respect to the generator RPM, we try to plot uh, what is the excitation frequencies of the gearbox uh, right from HSS to the LSS stage. Let's say the why I'm uh, trying to mean here excitation frequency is like the HSS itself would excite and would cause gear mesh frequency uh, excitations for various levels for different speeds. Uh, in a real time uh, situation, uh, we see that a turbine operates with varying wind speeds. Uh, say from three meters per second to 24 meters per second. So, and your torque keeps varying at all times. So, but when we do, uh, do a simulation in uh, one dimensional, this one, we assume a constant torque. There's no change in uh, the gear mesh. Uh, uh, there's no, uh, it is completely a sinusoidal uh, model inside. So, uh, as I said that we have a DRESP model, DRESP tool. Uh, the tool would uh, look something like this. Uh, when you see at the rotor side, we have the mass and uh, defined for the blade right from the tip to the root. And uh, this one, one uh, the number one here indicates the, it is the rotor hub. Then the following uh, attachment is about the, our gearbox uh, stage where we go specifically about defining what is our, the uh, rotor uh, the planet diameters and uh, the behavior, uh, the mass, and as well as the stiffness of the uh, shafts inside. This would be our uh, the stage which you see as planetary stage is LSS. Here it is the only three planets. There would be uh, even a different case where we have four planets also. 
the number 456 indicates your planets and this one is a planet carrier which holds all these three and they have the same sen sense of rotation and uh, if you see uh, this one this is the one all the planets is connected to the sun shaft the rear end of the sun shaft here is connected to the intermediate stage uh, where you could see that uh, there are a few mass uh, for example, uh, given shaft is only split into two mass, but here in this uh, stage, planetary as well as the intermediate stage, we are not uh, bothered about uh, uh, going for uh, discretizing with higher uh, higher masses. Uh, the reason is like the planetary stage and the intermediate stage is more uh, prone to stiffness parameters, like uh, because of the torque coming in from the rotor and uh, it needs to absorb more torque at the LSS stage. When you go to the HSS stage, it is more prone to the speed. So we, are, uh, we need to uh, define how the mass is more important there. So that is how we uh, connect these models. Yeah. So, so it is in depth, uh, uh, as, we, as I said in my previous uh, slide out, we define more about the planet stages inside how it happens. Uh, this is how a, a, a typical uh, display would be. So what if, if uh, the question is to you uh, that you have two type of problems that uh, you have a turbine and you have a tower and then um, you have the uh, excitation frequency from the rotor and it is trying to affect the tower. Uh, there is an issue of resonance that occurs during its operation. Now, once you have decided with the stiffness of the tower, it still resonates. Now, when it resonates, you can't again go and change the stiffness of the model. So, will anyone be able to tell me if, how, what, how do we overcome this problem? But this is at the field level. You can't do anything once it goes to there. Prior to, like in design stage, we define what is the natural frequency of the tower. And based on that, we define the rotor RPM. So the rotor up here once, uh, when it let, let's say for a, this particular uh, uh, particular uh, turbine, which is a 700 kilowatt and it is 54 meter diameter and it has a height of about 70 meter from the ground. And uh, we found that the natural frequency of the tower is about 4, 0.47 hertz. So based on this, your uh, rated rotor RPM is fixed. So now will you be able to tell me how do we attempt uh, in the field uh, to overcome the resonance or avoid the resonance. Of course, it is there for the gearbox as well as the generator, which is protected uh, from these external vibrations, external source of uh, force. But uh, well, uh, I can give you a clue. Uh, for example, as I said, uh, the bus example, you start to hold your hand and that is your control system from your mind to activate what we do. So how do we respond? So similarly, a turbine has its control systems built in, and we try to uh, uh, tell the control system that whenever the natural frequency coincides from the rotor, our, uh, the blade pitch and starts, uh, the blade pitch, uh, pitch and takes place, and it will increase the RPM in the, for that particular time slot. Let's say the, at 23 RPM, it meets the natural frequency of the tower, uh, then the, uh, immediately before uh, the split second, the control system will decide to increase the rotor RPM in that, for that particular time frame. Let's say it happens between five to 10 seconds. And the same thing happens again uh, for the, this is for 1P as well as 3P. So this is how we do it in an operational model analysis, uh, controlling the uh, frequency of the tower. Uh, but well, what you do when a uh, gearbox is concerned, you can't change the stiffness and mass uh, because it is already decided from the customer that this is your torque speed and you can't do anything once it is being in the uh, field. So the, based on the torque speed curve, what the customer gives, we try, we have a 10% in mar margin over that and we try see that the gear excitations does happen and how do we overcome the problem is change the number of teeth, we have a, a margin to accommodate the gearbox ratio as well, three percentage margin is given by the customer, 
And then also, if it also doesn't fit in within the 3% margin, we go to the next level of uh, changing the stiffness of the housing and thereby reducing the excitation uh, from the gear, uh, gears. That's it. So we have done, uh, based on the dress model which you had seen, we have done some post-processing uh, and it, uh, the mode shapes would look like the, uh, the sample which you see here. And uh, this is right from uh, rotor till end to the generator one. And uh, this indicates what is the mass numbers and how do we define the stiffness. And uh, this has been done for uh, various gearbox levels, right from one megawatt till eight megawatt. We have also capability to do the test bench setup also, because you have param uh, other components such as your motors, the carton shaft also comes into the picture. We need to define how the frequencies of those components are there at your uh, floor level. So this is a typical uh, uh, mode shape models. Thank you.